So this is the Contiplex TUI Ultra Set. It's an 18 gauge TUI, uh, and the, it's a 10 centimetre needle. So it looks like this from the other side. And I'm just going to show you how I assemble it to get it, to re to, uh, get it ready for sighting a catheter. Obviously I do this in a sterile manner. Open up the packet and I would empty the contents onto my sterile trolley or sterile tray. Within the set, it comes with a needle, with a giving set, the catheter itself, the catheter clamp, a filter, and this device, which is used to clamp into the back of the filter. That clamps in like that. So I'm gonna move this to one side. The first thing I do is I remove the electrical cabling because we're not gonna be using this for this procedure. So I remove this to one side. I take the connection and I connect it on with a nice twist. At the moment, we have got lure connections, but that may well change in the, in the future. I then take saline as a seeker solution. I remove the cap, connect it, and I purge the whole set with saline right the way through. You can see um, saline coming out the end of the needle. The next phase I do is a nice little handy tip. Again, fully sterile. I open the catheter from the set and you'll notice the catheter has this green, uh, a green attachment here. And this green attachment is to allow you to thread the catheter through the back of the needle. So if you place that little gizmo in there, you hear a click. You then thread the catheter, black tip first, via this green attachment. If I move my hands out of the way, you can see the catheter is now threading quite easily through the green attachment. Once I've threaded the catheter, and I remove the end of the, uh, the plastic sheath so you can see. Once you thread the catheter up to this solid, thick black line, which is 20 centimeters, so that's 15 centimeters. Once you get to that, that black line, which is 15 centimeters, you'll see the catheter emerges from the end of the needle. So I'm going to bring the, the, the catheter back a bit. And at this point, if I was to inject via the giving set with the green at connection attached, low clamp state will actually, it do, although it comes out the end of the needle, will also come out the back here. So at this point, you can dislodge that green connection, remove it out of the way. And you now have a needle loaded with a catheter with a giving set connected. And you can then administer low clamp so that it comes out the end of the needle and when you need to then place the caster all you need to do is to simply advance and it's ready to go. Okay now this is mimicking need a patient in the prone position uh, scanning at the back of the leg doing an outer plane technique. So I've got the probe here I get uh, across the popliteal fossa found a nice place where I can see the nerve. I pop through into the sheath I've injected some saline and I've actually got a nice view of the needle within the sheath between the tibial nerve and the common perineal nerve. At this point, I've got a couple of options. Number one, I can gently relax the needle because it shouldn't move. I can put the syringe to one side and then re-grasp the needle and make sure I'm happy with seeing the needle on the screen. And because I've preloaded the catheter, I can simply advance the catheter using my thumb and my index finger while supporting the needle between my middle finger and my ring finger. That's relatively nice technique. The other option is whilst I've got a transverse view of the nerve, I can then rotate the probe through 90 degrees. This way I can scan along the shaft of the needle and I might even be able to watch the catheter emerging outside the tip of the needle as I thread it in real time. So in this setup, we're mimicking a patient in the prone or in the lateral position, doing the needle and probe position as if you were doing a standard single shot block in plane. Once you pass by the common perineal nerve and you're in the sheath, 
injected local anesthetic to open up that sheath. The next thing to do is to put the um, syringe down, hold on to the needle, and again, because your catheter is already preloaded, you could advance the catheter in plane, and in an ideal manner, you produce the buckle technique, which will be visible on another video that we'll show you here. So you keep threading the catheter until you see it go forward and then buckle back on itself. And then you simply remove the needle while making sure the catheter doesn't move. And you grasp the catheter at this site here and bring the needle out without dislodging it. So once you've got your needle in your correct position and you've threaded the catheter, the predetermined amounts are between three to five centimeters maximum within the space, whether that be in plane or out of plane, it's now time to remove the needle whilst leaving the catheter where it is. You shouldn't need to advance the catheter that much because you've threaded sufficient amounts in the space. As soon as the needle comes out, grab the catheter by the skin and remove the needle in its entirety. In reality, the catheter would be much further in here. So let me just advance it for completeness sake. So we're gonna say the catheter was 10, nine, eight centimeters at the skin. So make a record of where the catheter is at the skin. So having threaded your catheter and removed the needle, we've now got it at eight centimeters at the skin. It's now time to make sure that we've got everything as it should be. Uh, so at this point, this is the clip. If you pop down the clip, it should literally pop up into place. So once that little clip has increased or uh, elevated, you thread the catheter up into the black line and then secure that nicely until you hear a click. Then remove the yellow cap on the top. We take the filter, remove the plastic cap from here and attach the two. Now at this stage, your catheter is ready for loading. In an ideal world, you would load the catheter alone with local anaesthetic and visualize the spread of the catheter, um, of local anaesthetic via the catheter. But I'm gonna assume that we've done that at this stage. Now we need to secure it in place. Because the hole left by the needle is larger than the hole required by the catheter, we tend to use Dermabond. So I would use Dermabond here. You uh, take it out of the sterile packet, you twist it and give it a squeeze via this black button and then you'll see the Dermabond glue will come down into this area. I Dermabond around the hole left by the needle and that will seal the hole and stop any excess fluid from coming out. And then I put a little bit of Dermabond about on the edge so I can create a little coil with the catheter. The idea being you want to minimize the chance it becomes dislodged. So I would create a coil like this and like this. And then ideally you would place some steri strips across that coil to hold that in place. And once you've done that, you place a tegaderm directly on top of that. So I'm gonna mimic doing that with uh, the cover from a tegaderm over here. So I'm gonna take the date strip from the tegaderm just to mimic that process. So I've put my dermabond around the skin. I'm gonna create a coil. And actually the dermabond that you put to the skin will also help to adhere the catheter in place. I'll then place this strip across that, allowing you to maintain the view of the catheter insertion site. Place my tegaderm on top of that, so that's nice and secure. And then you can use tegaderm to secure it further up the leg or the thigh. The last stage is to ensure that you use the, um, you secure the catheter safely. So you can place a filter on that, remove the adhesive part on the back of this, um, the back of this ECG dot type structure and then you can secure that at a point further up on the leg. There is another weakness point here. So at this point here between the catheter and the clip, there's the potential for it to come disconnected. So you can also place tegaderm around that or even put a little bit of a glue around the exit site here. This is the tip that connects to the local anaesthetic infusion line. And again, you can secure all of that in place. And within the set, there are these nerve block stickers, which it makes sense to utilize 
I can place one of those along here. I've already demonstrated how once you've connected the giving set to the needle, it's important to purge that. I have seen people in the past attach the syringe directly on the end of the needle, but number one, it doesn't hold the syringe firmly, and number two, it's quite a cumbersome uh, sort of setup in order to do that. So please do utilize the giving set, purge the line, and then it does make sense, as I said, to put the green connection in and then preload that catheter. If you don't preload the catheter, there is that potential that you may forget to do that or that you may try to place the catheter in here without that green connection, which you just can't do. So if you place the connection on here and preload the catheter in advance from the, uh, the, um, the black tip going in first, that makes it a lot easier. And then before you actually start to do your nerve block or your injection, please make sure you remove the green connection. If you leave the green connection in, as you inject your local anesthetic or your saline, it will simply just come out through that green connection. So dislodge it so it's out of the way and you can do your nerve block that way. The last thing to mention that is important is, is in an ideal world, one would pre test the catheter by flushing it in advance. So in order to do that, you would attach your, um, your clip which goes on, I pop that up and that pass that right up into the black line. Attach the, the filter towards the end and then purge that with saline or local anesthetic to make sure that the catheter is actually working. You can see those lines, are, those holes are patent. And then to release the clip, you simply push down on the tip of the, cath on the, tip of the clip there and the catheter comes out.